In this video, I'll be showing you how to make percussion caps using Strike Anywhere matches in tinfoil, and the science behind how it works. For this project, you'll need a box with Strike Anywhere matches, a mortar and pestle, a sheet of tinfoil, scissors, wire cutters, and a napkin or tissue paper. It also helps to have some kind of percussion or cap gun, but a hammer works just as well, too. Make sure your matches are Strike Anywhere matches, as they tend to have a larger match head than box strike matches. Use your wire cutters to cut off the match head, but make sure you don't cut any wood off the match stick, as this will make it more difficult to grind up the match heads. Try to cut off the white tip with a little of the green showing. You can use scissors for this as well, but I find the wire cutters provide a much more smooth and accurate cut than scissors. I've cut about 8 match heads in total, but you only need about 3 to 4 for one percussion cap. Now we're going to grind up the match heads into a fine powder but be very careful to break up the matches slowly and gently. Press lightly with slow grinding motion, and don't hammer it like you're tenderizing meat. The more steadier and slower, the better the result. If you pound too hard, you could ignite or detonate the matches. Once the matches are broken up, they're very shock sensitive, so grind slower with less pressure. If you grind too fast, you'll detonate it too. And this goes without saying, but this powder ignites very easily. So no open flames nearby. Now you should have a nice fine powder. It doesn't have to be like flour, but make sure there's no large chunks. Now we'll make the actual percussion cap. Cut a piece of tin foil long enough to cut a square about the size of a small matchbook. You'll need three in total. Then lay the three sheets over each other. Now this is where it's handy to have a percussion pistol, but don't worry if you don't have one, you can use the blunt end of an unsharpened pencil. With either a percussion pistol or pencil eraser, mold the three sheets of tin foil over the nipple of the pistol or the blunt end of the pencil, just so you make an indentation in the foil. Use the hammer of the pistol to help mold the foil over the nipple. This indentation will then hold the powder. Don't press too hard or you might tear the foil. Once you have an indentation that's deep enough, cut the extra tin foil off around the indentation, just so it looks closer to a real percussion cap. Next, we're going to fold a piece of paper in half and then pour our match powder into the crease. Hold the folded paper over the percussion cap and gently tap the powder in. It's okay if not all the powder goes into the cap, you only need a small amount, but make sure it's enough to fill up the indentation. Next, grab your napkin and unfold it into a single ply. Cut out a small piece about the size of the cap. This will act as a wadding to hold the powder in the cap and also to compress the powder in when you prime it on your pistol. Lay the napkin piece over the percussion cap and press gently. Now prime the pistol. Make sure to fold the percussion cap around the nipple to secure it in place and to prevent any powder from falling out. Alright, let's see how this works. Not bad. But let's try a second cap with more powder and outside. Now if you're curious how this works, the match head is composed of phosphorus sesquisulfide and potassium chlorate. When the phosphorus sesquisulfide and potassium chlorate are mixed and exposed to shock from friction or pressure, the combination yields an exothermic reaction yielding potassium chloride, phosphorus pentoxide, and heat. If you have any questions for science, don't forget to post in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.